In the last video, we introduced behavioral model using always block. And I guess I also mentioned if you want to design any synchronous circuits, you'll have to always use always block. Okay, so in this video, we'll be looking at some of the synchronous circuits. So, uh, first circuit that we are going to design is a synchronous adder. Okay. So, the adder circuit we have seen before. The adder that we have seen, that's a combinational adder. So you remember, uh, we designed a 4-bit adder. So we have the adder here. And we'll give two inputs, A and B. And we made them 4 bits wide. And we got the output sum, and which will be 5 bits. Okay. So this is how our combinational adder looks like. Now, when we say synchronous adder, uh, the inputs will be again giving two inputs maybe 4 bits wide, but the output from the adder should come only on the next clock edge. So the output output should be synchronous with the clock. With the clock. So when we look from outside, so we have our sync adder. We'll again have this A and B going in, A and B. In addition to that, we'll also send the clock. Now, when you start the circuit, synchronous circuit, you can also have an option like whenever you start the circuit, irrespective of the input, your output will be zero. And from the next uh, posterior edge of the clock, the output will correspond to the sum of A and B. Okay, so to make it something like that, uh, we can have a reset signal also. So this is how it will look like. A, B, clock reset. They are the inputs and some is the output. So let's go ahead and see how we can design it. Okay. So I'll start a new with log source code. Again, first part is exactly the same. Uh, you can say module sync adder. We have inputs. Again, let's make it a bit wide. You can make it whatever you prefer. We have input A, input B, also for bits wide. We also have the clock because it's synchronous. We usually write clock and reset at the beginning. No such rule, but we usually follow it like that. Okay, clock and reset. And we have the output, let's say S. Now the design part we'll use always at for such clock or for such reset. Let's have an asynchronous reset. So the condition was if reset is there, as soon as I press the reset, my sum capital S will become zero. So what is the width of sum? It should be five bits, so four down to zero. And uh, we'll say like sum is zero. Okay, so sum is five tick decimal number zero. Now else our sum will be nothing but sum of a and b. That means if there is no reset, sum will be a plus b and module. If you compare it, it will give an error because remember, all the left hand signals inside always block should be declared as reg type. So we should declare output reg s. Okay, so that's it. And we can save it as sync adder dot v. We can compile vlog sync adder and vsim work dot sync adder. So we have clock here. Let's again for 10 nanosecond. Let's make reset signal high at the beginning. Let us make A and B both as zero at the beginning. Okay, zero, zero, and let us run like five nanosecond here. And you can see. Okay, so the output is zero. Now let me make can be as okay let's say 5 
and uh, tick the three here but remember the reset is still asserted because of that the output will remain zero you can see it and send decimal now on this negative edge I'm going to remove the reset so you can see reset it got deasserted here but the output it didn't change because our adder is synchronous now the output will change only on the next positive edge so here you can see 8 came out which is the sum okay so again on this negative edge let me make a as okay let's say t3 itself and if we run on the next positive edge you will see output as 6 now this we have discussed before this is the positive edge so on the positive edge let me try to change b as tick d4 but remember even if you are changing on the positive edge simulator will treat it like it changed delta t after the positive edge so nothing happens to the output on this clock edge the value of b is still 3 after the positive edge it became 4 and on the next positive edge here you can see 3 plus 4 7 came as the output so let me add few more words about this coding style so here you can see i just wrote reset i didn't write reset equal to equal to one tick b1 okay again the idea again comes from c if you just write if reset or just if any condition that basically means if that condition is true so writing if reset is same as writing if reset equal to equal to one tick b1 same way if you write if not reset this one it is same as writing if reset equal to equal to one tick b2 okay so that's why that was omitted now again like c uh we'll have the concept of code blocks here okay so where is your always block starting and where it ends uh, has to be indicated provided that you have more than one statement under always block now the if else state this one is treated as a single statement because you have a single statement under if a single statement under else the rules are exactly same so in c also you can write like this but if you have more than one statement under if, else, or under any other thing, uh, we usually put curly brackets to indicate the beginning and end of your code block. But of course, in Wedlock, we won't be using curly brackets. So remember, curly bracket, this one, this is a concatenation operator here. Okay, so since it is used for concatenation operator, uh, we'll be using another technique using so called begin end. Okay, so begin to indicate the beginning of a code block and end to indicate the end of a code block again if you have a single statement this is optional but it is always better to put begin and to indicate the beginning and ending so for if also you can write uh, begin here and end here it need not be in a separate line you can write here itself begin like that again good coding practice we usually write it just under begin and end and after that we'll put some indentation okay so that's it now it looks cleaner again just compile once to make sure there are no errors okay so no errors okay so let's go ahead and design one more circuit okay so here out should should be synchronous with clock okay not by okay so let's uh, make another circuit okay let's say uh, synchronous mux synchronous multiplexer so how will you make it it will look exactly same the code will look quite similar so what is the requirement uh, just like before you have let's say okay a b these are the two inputs you have the control signal so let's call it c or select signal okay let's call it s then and you have a clock reset you can add optionally anyway and we have this output okay so if s is 0 output is a if s is 1 output is b same as before only condition is the output should change only on the posterior edge of the clock so i can edit in the same with low code so let's call it sync mux this time so clock okay reset maybe we don't need 
if you want you can put no issues so we have a b as input and we also have s as input our output is o okay so always at percentage clock we can say if s using our previous style our output is a else our output is b that's it so this will make a synchronous marks you can simulate and see the output whether it is working properly or not now let's look at the general structure of a synchronous circuit so what is the general structure so general structure will look something like this uh, you will have a combinational circuit combo circuit which does the actual operation and the output from this combo circuit will be going to a bunch of flip-flop and the output from this flip-flop will be going as your final output so our inputs are going to this combo it generates the actual output some output that will go to a bunch of flip-flops from there you will get the output and we'll have the clock signal connected to these flip-flops this is not one flip-flop depending upon how many outputs you have you will have those many flip-flops so what is going to happen as soon as you give the input this combination circuit will generate the corresponding output but that will not come out as the final output because of this flip-flop only on the next clock edge positive or negative depending upon how you design it only on the next clock edge this output will propagate to the output so if you have reset synchronous asynchronous that will be also connected to this flip-flop okay so now we have d flip-flop with uh, reset now so reset will be going here and clock will be going here input will be going here and the output so let's look at our four bit adder sync adder how it got designed okay so we have our previous combo adder here four bit adder combo adder what is inside this adder you already know to that we gave our a and b inputs and the adder it gave output let's say four bits four bits this is five bit output to clarify things let me draw five separate lines so five these five together we call as s what he does is he will put uh, flip-flops five flip-flops at this output signals okay because one flip-flop can take only one input now from the flip-flop the final output will come out and these final output we actually call them as S in the previous design. We call the output as S. They are actually coming from these flip flops. So flip flop, flip flop, flip flop, flip flop, flip flop, and they all operate synchronously. That means they all work on the same clock signal. So one clock comes from outside, same clock feeds to all these flip flops. Same way you applied a reset. So we have a reset coming and same reset is also connected to all these flip-flops. This is how our sync adder works. Now sync uh, mux, how is it going to work? So you will have mux, same as before. You have A, B, S connected here. So this is our combo circuit, the guy who actually does all the work. From there it goes to a single flip-flop because you have a single output and this is called O and that clock get connected here okay so now, now whenever you give A and B immediately output will come here but it will propagate to output only on the next positive edge of the clock okay now from the coding style now you can make out what is really going to happen so everything on the left hand side of this assignment so remember his name is non-blocking assignment statement okay every guy on the left hand side of this non-blocking assignment it will be coming as the output of a flip-flop a flip-flop see that o is coming as the output of flip-flop this s is coming as the output of flip-flop so s and o they are on the left hand side of the always block so here also one mistake is that if you compare we need to declare o as reg type so in some sense it is saying like o is the output of a 
register registers are nothing but they are flip flop okay usually a bunch of flip flop more than one flip flop we call it as a register but even one flip flop you can call it as a register no problem so o is the output of a register in some sense uh, that is what this means but uh, don't get the wrong idea the o will be always the output of a register that we will discuss later the exceptional cases but generally uh, if you are designing a synchronous circuit definitely whatever you write on the left hand side of this non blocking assignment statement they will be the output of the flip flop whatever you write on the right hand side of this assignment statement and everything that you write under if else if else and later we'll see other statements also like case statement anything right that you write with if else if else case etc they will be all going to the combinational logic they will be all going to a combinational logic uh, like here and like here so as soon as you see a code you should be able to visualize how the circuit looks like same way uh, whenever you look at a circuit you should be able to visualize the, how the code will look like all these things will go to a combinational circuit and this will be the output from the flip flop so you should be able to visualize like that so that uh, we need to develop that capability uh, how to visualize from circuit to code how to visualize from code to circuit so that's the main point when we are learning with loop